All right, now that we have decimals at hand, let's actually do some interesting division problems. In particular, let's recall that a fraction like 1 8 is actually an answer to the division problem. This is the answer to the division problem 1 divided by 8. And we can perform that division in a 10-1 machine, we'll stick with base 10, if we have ever many boxes going to the right. So for example, here's what 1 looks like, right there. But we're now allowing ourselves in this 10-1 machine to have a whole bunch of boxes over yonder as well. So 1, 10, hundreds, thousands, 1 tenths, 1 hundredths, 1 thousandths, and so on. All right, so let's actually do this work. What is 1 divided by 8? What does 8 look like? Well, 8 looks like, well, not very exciting, 8 dots in a box. And I don't see any right now. Let me just change color. I'm going to be a little sophisticated here. Obviously, I'm going to want to unexplode and get some 8s going. So if I unexplode this guy, 1 dot came from 10, so it must be 10 dots here. I'm getting, getting tired of drawing dots. I'm going to just write the number 10. I hope that's okay. And the question is, can I see any groups of 8 in that? Well, obviously I can. I can see 1 in that group. And if I take care of that, that would leave 2 dots left over I still have to contend with. All right, so I could say the answer is 1 divided by 8 is 0.1 with a remainder of 0.2 or something, or however I read that. I'm not quite sure how I read that. In any case, but I can keep going, because two dots could unexplode. Each unexplode to make 10, make 20 dots here. And I can ask, are there any groups of eight in that 20? You betcha, there's two of them. Uh, that would leave four dots left over for me to still contend with. Okay, I could stop there and say there's some remainder, however I interpret that, but I could unexplode those four dots each and get 40 dots in this box and ask, are there any eights in there? And indeed there are, there's five, and that's dealt with all the dots. In fact, I can now see that the answer to this division problem, 1 divided by 8, is 0.125. So we say that 1 eighth is 0 0.125. So with this freedom to keep going to the right, we actually keep going with our division problems. If there's remainders, just keep pushing them down and, and deal with the consequences. Grand. And you know, you might want to practice doing right now 1 quarter. What's 1 divided by 4? And you'll get 0.25. Check that. Or what's uh, 7 divided by 4 for that matter? Um, put 7 dots here, look for groups of 4, and push it down. All right, let me clean my board. Clean in a, in a sort of a loose sense. And let's do a more interesting example, because I'm sure you're already thinking of some fractions that are going to be interesting when it comes to their decimal representations. So we'll stick with the base 10 machine still. But the next lesson, you can actually go to other bases and uh, I guess I'll call them eximals. I don't want to call them decimals. All right, let's try one divided by three, one third. All right, one dot, and there's a whole bunch of boxes to the right, decimal point, and as many boxes I want, oh, sorry, one dot to the left, and as many dots, boxes I want to the right. All right, I'm looking for groups of three in this picture. Right now, I see none of them. Well, if I unexplode, goodbye, and make 10 dots here, do I see any groups of three in there? You betcha, I see three groups of three. That's three groups of three, leaving one dot behind I still have to contend with. All right, I don't have to treat this as a remainder because I can push this down, because that one dot actually unexplodes to become ten dots here. Do I see any groups of three in there? You betcha, I see three groups of three. That's nine of those dots, leaving one behind still for me to deal with. Oh, one dot left over, let me unexplode, get ten dots here, and I feel like I'm in a little repeating pattern. But I am in a repeating pattern, because I keep doing this, three groups of three, one left behind, ten, three groups of three, one left behind, ten, da 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 da. I'm in an infinite process. So I actually perform this division, it looks like we can see that one third is 0 0.33333 forever. Some people like to say a repeating pattern is zero point, and then you put a little bar on top of the repeating part, so that's three gets repeated over and over again. Um, it's just a star, whatever your, your fancy is in terms of notation. That bar is called a vinculum. That word came up earlier on. All right, um, let's carry on. That was fine. So that's actually kind of interesting. So uh, was it one eighth gave us a, a decimal expansion that stopped. One third gives us a decimal expansion that keeps going on. Uh, let's choose an awkward one. Let's work out the decimal expansion of, say, six sevenths. And let's just go through the gory detail and see what we get, just for practice. All right, six sevenths. I want to work out six divided by seven. Um, again, I've got six dots. I won't bother drawing the actual dots because I'm getting tired of dots, which is hard to imagine. I never get tired of dots. I don't know how many boxes I'm going to need, so um, maybe that's enough. I don't know. we have been here for a while, I think. All right, all right. So I'm looking for groups of seven amongst those six dots to which I see zero. Let's unexplode. 
Six and explosions make 60 dots here. Do I see any dots among 60 dots? Any groups of seven among 60 dots? You bet I do. 56 is eight of them. So that gives me eight groups of seven, leaving four left over. Is that, is that notation okay? Can I do it like this? All right, four and explode them makes 40 dots here. Are there any groups of seven amongst 40? You bet, I think 35, that's five groups of seven. And that leaves uh, five dots left over for me to still deal with. All right, I can do this. Five dots and explode makes 50 dots over yonder. Uh, any groups of seven amongst 50 dots? You bet, I think the number 49, that's seven groups of seven. And I guess that leaves one dot left over. All right, that's kind of a remainder, or I can keep going. Uh, one dot and exposed to 10, there's a group of seven in there. You bet, there's one group of seven, uh, leaving three dots left over. All right, I'm gonna be here for a while, it looks like. Uh, three dots left over, uh, unexploded makes 30. Are there any groups of seven amongst 30 dots here? You bet there are, 28 comes to mind. That's four groups of seven, leaving two dots left over. All right, two dots, unexploded makes 20. Are there any groups of seven amongst 20 dots there? You bet, I'm thinking 14, that's two groups of seven, and that leaves, what, six dots left over. And then, and then, six unexplodes, becomes 60, I'm back to eight, leaving four dots left over. I'm, I'm sort of pausing right here, because I can see, once I've got six here, that's exactly what I started with at the beginning. All the work I did was six dots led, led to that. So I'm back to six dots again. So the same work's gonna happen again. Oh, I must get an eight, then a five, then a seven, then a one, then a four, and be left, and a two, and then be left with six dots again. I can see I'm in a cycle. It looks like six sevenths is 0.857142. 857142857142857142 forever. If you don't quite believe me, it's actually worth doing the tedious work once in your life just to really see that if you keep going, you really are doing the same work over and over again. So do it for you know 20 steps. You'll, you'll be convinced. Uh, some people like to use the vinculum notation, so this is really group 857142 that gets repeated over and over again. So there it is. This one turns out to be an infinite decimal composed of six digits that echo in a repeating pattern. There it is. Now we know how to work to convert fractions into decimals. And we can do nasty ones, for example, if I asked what 17 37ths is, we could do it. Um, though any person in their right mind would just get out a calculator at that point. Okay, there it is, playing with fractions, turning them into decimals, totally within our reach. 10-1 machine, no worries. If we want to do the same work in a 5-1 machine or a 4-1 machine, we could. And that'll be the next section. I'll leave that for you to look at. The, the text there, oh, the text under this video deals with this work some more, so look at that text. And the text in the next section deals with other bases, if you like to do that. But then, my next video is going to be for lesson uh, 2.4. So I'll see you then.